Are you tired of wrestling with payment integration and auth setups? If so, you came to the right place. In the next 10 or so minutes, I will show you how to supercharge your next JS project with Stripe and Superbase. We'll tackle subscriptions, one-time payments, and even customize the Stripe portal. Plus, we'll implement GitHub auth, handle refunds, and add a maintenance mode as an oh button, all in your local environment. Let's get into it. To run Superbase locally on your computer, you will need Docker. So install that and make sure it's running in the background. The second thing you'll need to install is the Superbase CLI. Do the same thing with Stripe CLI. If you don't have a Stripe account, create one. Then run Stripe login. This will allow you to connect the CLI to your Stripe account and listen to webhooks from Stripe locally. We're gonna save ourselves some time by starting off with the next JS subscription payments template, just so we don't need to create the UI from scratch. After cloning the project to set up GitHub authentication, go to your GitHub account, go to settings, and under settings, go to developer settings. Make sure to select OAuth apps, not GitHub apps, then create a new OAuth app. Set the homepage to localhost 3000, and copy the Superbase auth external GitHub redirect URL from your .env.example file in your cloned repo and paste it into the authorization callback URL field. After that, copy the client secret and client ID and paste them into the corresponding variables in the .env.example file. Get rid of the .example from the file names of both environment files. Now navigate to your project directory in the terminal and run Superbase start. Once Superbase has finished initialization, take the service row key and drop it into the .env.local file. The .env.local file is used by Next.js, while the .env is used by Superbase. To link your Next.js project to your Stripe account, first make sure the test mode toggle is toggled on. You need to take the publishable key and secret key and paste them into the .env.local file. To get our Stripe webhook secret, run Stripe login in your terminal if you haven't done so already. You'll then want to run bun stripe listen. You can use any package manager you like, it doesn't have to be bun. This will then generate your webhook signing secret. Just copy that and paste it into the .env.local file. Now if you go to your Stripe webhook tab, you should see that your machine is now listed under local listeners. All right, now that we have that working, let's quickly go into our Next.js project and install dependencies and just check that it's all working. Control click on localhost 3000 in your VS Code terminal, or you can just navigate there in your browser. That will then display your Next.js web app. Okay, this is looking good, but I don't see any products here. So what's happening? Well, let's take a look at that now. In your Stripe account, go to the product catalog page. You can get here by using the search bar at the top. Create a recurring payment product and refresh your Next.js web app. Okay, so now that I refresh the page, I see the subscription and GitHub auth flow seems to work as well. So clicking subscribe also takes us to the Stripe portal, which seems to work. And navigating to our local Superbase dashboard, we do see the product in our products table in our database. That's it, right? Well, yes, but no. If we try to add a one-off payment product to our Stripe account, you'll notice that while this shows up in our Superbase Studio, it does not show up in our Next.js page. And that's what we're gonna be working on next. To allow one-off payments in our project, we'll first need to modify our Superbase database. Navigate to the Superbase folder and under migrations, you'll find a SQL file in there. This file contains the database schema for our Postgres database on Superbase. Let's create a perpetual licenses table. This table will contain all of our users who have paid for our product in full. The table will be automatically populated via Stripe webhook, which we will be going over later in this video. For now, let's reset our local Superbase database so that the new schema with the table that we just added will be reflected in the database. I just said database one too many times, didn't I? Make sure to generate the database TypeScript types using the Superbase command in your terminal. 
This will override the type file and make sure that the perpetual license table will be added as a type. After generating the types, you may find that there is a linting error in admin.ts file under the utils and superbase folder. You can fix this by adding description and metadata, setting both to null since we don't really need it in this tutorial. All right, let's make our perpetual license show up on our Next.js pricing page. First, navigate to utils superbase queries.ts file. In this file, we're going to add a function called get perpetual. And what this function does, it'll return the row that matches the user's ID in the perpetual license table, allowing us to check whether the user has perpetual license or not, as well as retrieving any other relevant data in that table. All right, now that we have this function, where do we use it? Let's go to our page.tsx file at the root of our apps directory and we're going to import it as well as call the function in the promise array and set it as the property of the pricing element. Don't worry if you see linting error, we're just about to modify our pricing component to take into account the perpetual license. Navigate to the pricing component tsx file and add the type perpetual license. This references the generated types that we generated using the Superbase CLI earlier in the video. Next, add perpetual to props, allowing us to access perpetual licenses that was passed in earlier. Modify the billing interval so it can only be set to either recurring or one time. And specify the default state value to recurring. At this point, you'll probably have a bunch of linting errors related to billing interval. Don't worry, we'll get into that in just a bit. Create a function inside the pricing component called getButtonText. This function will return the appropriate text depending on whether user has a perpetual license, subscription, or whether the user is viewing monthly or lifetime billing. Next, we want to make sure that if the button text is manage, we would redirect the user to the Stripe portal instead of the payment page. Now let's go and fix the rest of the billing interval errors. Because we have previously reset our database to update our schema, we need to re-add our products in Stripe so that the webhooks will trigger, therefore adding the products back into the database. I know it's annoying, but you only have to do it when you actually reset the database. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Just a little tweak I want to make is the text after the dollar amount and changing yearly billing to lifetime. All right, let's test out our payment flow. Actually, let's click back for a moment and see what it does. Okay, if you encounter this issue, don't worry, you just need to restart your Next.js server and that should fix the issue. Let's try buying the perpetual license. Hmm, weird, the button text still does not reflect me having purchased the perpetual license. And if I take a look at the table editor in Superbase, I don't see my perpetual license. You may think to yourself, is this a bug? No, it's not. Let's fix it right now. <laughs> Go to the admin.ts file under utils superbase folder. We're going to be adding two functions here. The first one being add perpetual license. What this function is going to do is it's going to insert users perpetual license into the perpetual license table. We will also create a corresponding remove perpetual license function in the case that we make refunds to our users. Export both functions and go to webhooks route. I'm going to be adding charge refunded to relevant events as well as importing the two functions that we just created. Now we'll need to go to the checkout session complete case in the switch inside route.ts file. We're then going to add an else statement that then will call the add perpetual license function that we just created in order to insert data into the perpetual licenses table. You can then create a charge refund case and call remove perpetual license here. Reset the database one more time and rerun the Next.js server. Recreate your products on Stripe and try purchasing the perpetual license. 
go to your Superbase dashboard, and now, finally, you should see the perpetual license that has been purchased. To take it a step further, when the user has purchased a perpetual license or has subscription, if they happen to land on the pricing page, redirect them immediately to their accounts page so they can manage their subscription or see whether they have perpetual license or not. As you can see, now if we click on pricing, it doesn't go anywhere. It just stays on the accounts page. Now, if we want to access pricing, we'll first need to cancel our subscription and then refund the user's perpetual license. Technically, they can't have subscription and perpetual license at the same time, but in our case, we did manage to do that before we added all this code. Great, now that we have all that, there's a few things that I want to change with the accounts page. The first one is that if I have subscription, it doesn't even show me when my subscription renews, or if I cancel my subscription, it doesn't show when my subscription ends. Also, if I have perpetual license, it doesn't show me that I have perpetual license. So I don't even know what I have, right? In the customer portal form component, you'll want to add the perpetual license type again. You'll also add it to the props. Then you'll create three functions inside the component corresponding to the title, pricing, and footer. In get pricing, we'll just return unlimited if user has perpetual license or the monthly price of the subscription. For get title text, if the user has perpetual license, we tell them you have perpetual license. If they have subscription, then we'll tell them that they're on the subscription plan. Otherwise, we just tell them they're not on any subscription plan. As for footer text, we tell them either they're not on a subscription plan or the subscription will end on a certain date or when the subscription will renew. Now just replace the text inside the component with the functions that we just created. Now to make all this work, you need to go to the accounts page, import get perpetual, store the value in a variable, and then pass it into customer portal form. When you refresh the accounts page, you should now see the new changes being reflected. One more thing that I want to do in the accounts page is to disable the open customer portal when user has perpetual license. This is because even if the user opened the customer portal when they have the perpetual license, the invoice section on Stripe does not show one-time payments. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, hopefully Stripe will add that at some point or maybe I'm missing something. If I am, please let me know down below in the comments. With that out of the way, let's look at how we can customize the Stripe checkout page. On Stripe, navigate to your search bar and type in billing. You'll see that in the dropdown, there is billing under settings. Click on that. You'll then go to the customer portal tab. And in that tab at the bottom, you should see branding settings. Click on that. On this page, you'll be able to customize the brand and accent color as well as the icon, logos, and a few other things. Keep in mind that when you click save changes in here, this will be reflected in test mode and in live mode. Next, let's implement maintenance mode. This will temporarily take down our website so users will not be able to get past the landing page. All we need to do is in our .env.local file, create a maintenance mode environment variable and assign it to zero if the maintenance mode is off and one if maintenance mode is on. And in our top level layouts component, we'll just check if maintenance mode is enabled, then we return a simple page that lets the user know that the website is down for maintenance. I know we didn't cover deployment in this video, but that's what next video is gonna be for. So make sure to subscribe for that. Also to prepare for that, I highly suggest you take a look at the Superbase authentication video right here. Am I pointing at the right place? Anyway, somewhere here, somewhere around here. We'll definitely need that. Anyway, let me know what you think about this video down below in the comments. And if you have any suggestions, also let me know about that. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.